Uh, thank you, Rochelle, and welcome everybody to this month's Connect with Remedy webinar. We will be uh, covering common issues in SRM processing, and our presenter today will be Jeff Hudson, a lead technical support analyst. During his presentation, if there are any questions on the content, you're able to ask these in our Q&A pod, pod, and our and panelists, panelists will be able, be able, able to, to answer, answer them. them. At this time, I'll turn it over to Jeff Hudson. Thanks, Craig. As Greg mentioned, we're going to be talking about some common issues that can occur in the processing of a service request lifecycle. So uh, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at the agenda. So we're going to have a brief architecture overview of SRM. And as you can see here, the two areas we're going to cover today are approvals and CAI. We're going to go over some troubleshooting scenarios we've run into with these two areas. and. We're hoping that this helps you solve some of your issues you may be running into. If it doesn't, we've, we've got a couple of slides of information you can provide when opening a support case that will kind of help jumpstart the troubleshooting of a support case. And we've got some references and then we're gonna take some Q&A. So here's a, a high level overview of the architecture of SRM as it relates to what we're gonna be talking about today. You see in phase one, we've got the self-service interface that can be request entry, a DWP, smart IT, a web service, or you know, any method to create a service request, the interface create form. Phase two, we've got the approvals, and the, the request is kind of in a holding pattern there. Nothing is being processed on the back end as far as fulfillment until the approval is acted upon until it's approved. So once the uh, service request is approved, CAI is utilized to create the fulfillment tickets. And we've got the three main ones that we use here, change, incident, work order. And during the life cycle of the service request, CAI is used to pass data, status values, work log updates, back and forth between the service request and the fulfillment tickets. And it's utilized throughout the life cycle of the service request. For approvals, here's some brief basic high-level information on approvals. The approval server is used for the process. And in SRM, we've got a three-way join form. And that form is utilized on the uh, SRM request form. That's the approvals table, and that information is populated in request details as well. And the form, got the form name there, request app detail signature. The approval administration console can be used to see all the rules, modify any rules, create your own, create notifications, create any signature escalations for still pending or, or whatever other type, type of uh, rules and notifications you may need. And via the approval administration console on the server settings link that's on the left-hand side, that's where you can enable approval server debug. So you'd wanna make sure if you're going to turn that on to set the level to debugger all, and then if you don't set a file path, it's going to use a default log path for the AR server, or you can choose a different path for the file. So approvals in the context of SRM, we've got four available out-of-the-box approval types. We have an ad hoc, which is a specific person that can be chosen for the approval. There's a level approval, call it group approval, management chain, it's going to be based on the uh, person's manager and their CTM people record. And there's an auto approve rule that's uh, inactive out of the box, but can be utilized. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. And also approval chains can be used with any of these processes or any other cu custom processes you may have. There's a limit of five processes per approval chain. So a little more information on approval chains. As, they, as it sounds, they, they allow you to chain together different approval processes. And they have qualifications to determine when they run. You can uh, use SR type fields in those qualifications or various other fields, you know, categories, specific SRDs, whatever other qualifications you wanna add to it, they're available in the approval chain console. And they also have the option, you can do a set fields. You definitely need to do a set fields, obviously, once everything is approved uh, to set the status to planning and it rejected all those others. But you can also set other fields that can be used during the processing. Any SR type fields, any other fields on the SRM request form you wanna set 
they're available in an approval chain. Now, when you save an approval chain or modify it, uh, let's just start with the set, creating one first. When you create it, a filter is created that's prefixed with ZAPR. And those filters are created via an API call. So, you know, a couple things you can do when, the, when you create the approval chain, if you want to go check in Dev Studio, make sure the chain is there. The qualification will be based on what you entered in the uh, qualification for the chain itself. If you're having a problem with the updates to your approval chain not appearing or the chain not being created, I'd recommend API and SQL logging when you save it or modify it to see what's occurring because there's an API call made for the approval server to create those and update them. When an approval chain is done processing through, the ITSM util plugin is called, and I've got the filter listed there that calls it. And, and that plugin makes a call and it's waiting for a return back before it you know, continues on and sets a request to whatever status it's gonna be. If you're running into issues, I've, we've seen issues in the past where application service password can be out of sync, it can cause a 623 error coming out of this filter. So if, if you're having trouble with the approval chains completing sometimes, this, this uh, filter in server-side, you know, filter SQL API logging could be a good item to check as well. And we're gonna go over some common scenarios here that we've seen that uh, hopefully will help some of the issues you might run into. So I'm gonna run through the, just some real quick here, then we'll go into each one in more detail. So the first one, an unintended approval chain matches the criteria you've got specified. The second one's kind of the opposite of that, no approval chains match, and there's no auto approve rule in place. Uh, using an ad hoc approval in a chain, but you don't have a way to set, you're not setting the approver. Uh, no manager defined for a management chain approval. For level approval, there, we've seen no approvers with the, uh, with the request approval role or availability, and we have seen some issues with currency, and then the last one, just approvals in general, not processing. So let's go into each one of those in a little more detail. Okay, so if you've got an unintended approval chain matching the qualification, you're gonna see it in server-side logging. I've got a little snippet up here, and we can see that we've got two ZAPR filters that are passing. And one of the, we, only, we only want one of them to pass. So the, the consequence of this is that the request goes into waiting approval and there's no approvers defined. So to remedy this situation, you go back, go back and check your qualifications and make sure that no unintended approval chain is gonna match. In, in this case, one of these should not be matching the qualifications that's in place. So once that's set, you should see this continue on with only one of them passing and the request will go into waiting approval and there will be approvers pending. Second use case is kind of the opposite of the first one. No approval chains match and there's no uh, auto approve chain in place. I've seen this happen before but let's just say if somebody had a question, they're using an SR type field in their qualification. And the question is, do you need a cell phone? And it's a yes, no answer. And they're passing that question response to one of the SR type fields and it's being used in the approval chain. And if the user selects yes, then the chain picks it up. But if they select no, they don't, you would have to create another chain that utilizes that no condition and covers for it. And in that case, if they're not using a cell, if they're not gonna need a cell phone in this scenario, and they say no, you could create another approval chain that only has an auto approve rule in it to cover the no condition. Because if we don't have one that, if, if, if you have none that match, we're gonna see the same symptom as the previous one. There's gonna be no approvers linked to awaiting approval service request. So it's just, they said this kind of the opposite of the first one, just make sure that you do have some that match and if you're using conditions kind of in your chain with SR type fields, make sure 
that you've got the other side of that, like if it's a yes, no, or any other kind of where there's one or the other, you've got both sides of that covered. Okay, the third use case is using an ad hoc approval without defining an approver. When you do an ad hoc in the context of an SRD, not in the context of a chain, when you do it in the SRD, you're allowed to specifically select a person. So it kind of takes care of that for you. When you do it in the context of an approval chain, you're gonna to need to make sure that that approver is defined. And there's a couple of ways to do it. One of them is in the SRD, when you choose custom, there's a box that will appear that's use request manager. That's gonna use the requester's manager for the, any ad hoc approval that's in the chain. The other option would be to use the Z1D approver field. So you would have to use sys form field to expose that or and do a mapping in the SRD or you can set that via set fields in the approval chain itself. So one of those options would need to be utilized when you're using an ad hoc approval in an approval chain. Okay, so this one is pretty straightforward. There's no manager defined. And in, in somebody's people record when you're using a management chain approval. And approval server logging, turn on debug logging, it's gonna show that the, there's no next approvers found and we're gonna get you know operation canceled due to error and it's gonna go to rejected. So the, the, the way to correct this, just make sure that if you're using a management chain approval, anybody that's gonna be utilizing that approver, utilizing that rule would have a approver defined in their people record. I have seen a case before where, where a customer wasn't, they, they, they knew that all people didn't have a, a managers defined in their people record. They actually created a, another rule to run off rejected because this would go to rejected, and then if you wanted to, you could have another process run off rejected. So that's another option that could be available there if you, do, if you have a situation where not everybody's got a manager defined in their people record. All right, this, the use case number five is to do with level approvals. There's a couple of things with the level approval that's a little bit different. You have to set up an approval mapping. And if you're pass, mapping it to a group, there has to be, a user, at least one user available in that group with the request approver role and they have to have availability. If, if that is not the case, then that approval is not gonna work for that level approval in that case. And, and it won't find any matches and the approval will, will go to waiting approval and there won't be any approvers for it. So we, you need to make sure if you've got a group to find in a level approval that there's users in there that have the request approval role for that group and they have availability. The other item we've seen has to do with the currency. It, it, it's kind of uh, one of those where it, it usually is, is not one of the standard currencies. I, I've seen it with the Braz a Brazilian currency before where the currency is not defined as one of the active or default currencies in the system, and the request will go to uh, rejected. You'll see the in the in the approval debug log, they won't find any matches. Next approvers will be null, and it'll and it'll go to rejected. So the key is making sure if you if you're running any currency related issues, make sure that the currency is defined, defined as as an, as an active, active currency in the, in the system. And that should take care of those. And the last one we've got is a general approvals aren't working across all applications. The first one, the, all, the previous five were kind of specific to SRM. This one will, could affect any application and probably will affect all applications. For SRM, change, RKM, anywhere else you've got approvals lined up, they're not gonna be processing. And if you check application pending, you'll see approval related records accumulating there. A lot of times we've seen a restart of an AR server can be helpful here, but you may need to check the AR config, AR monitor config, 
see if there are any, you know, if you're in a server group, were there any changes done to ranking? Were, you know, was the approval server enabled on one of the servers in the group when it shouldn't have been? And also check to see if there are any Java updates done recently as they can, uh, they can play a role in this as well. Okay, so moving on to the CI plugin. The CI plugin is utilized to create fulfillment requests in SRM and it runs off the main Java plugin process. It syncs data and statuses and work log entries between service requests and their fulfillment requests throughout the life cycle of the service request. When a record in CI events is created, its initial status in the return code field will be a warning. And workflow is responsible for initiating that record. So if you're running into a scenario where records are accumulating in CI events and the return code is showing as warning, we need to get a server-side filter SQL API log when, when one of those has been submitted so you can determine why this filter's not running. Could be due to possibly because this filter is making an API call to the plugin. There could be an issue with the plugin or in general the plugin server. Possibly other workflow is erroring out that's causing the, the, this filter to, can't, to get canceled in, in the process of that. So checking this filter if you've got items that are stuck in warning is a good troubleshooting step. Now, when a, when a fulfillment record is created, the event type that creates it is SRM out create app request, and that's, that's, that's in CI events. There are many other CI events, and, you know, they all have a, have a role that, that's utilized, but by far, this is the most important CI event in SRM, because this is the one that's responsible for creating the fulfillment request. So if you've got records accumulating in CI events, and we're going to talk about that some more in the next slide, records should not accumulate there. So let's go ahead and we'll move on to the next slide where we talk about that. When it completes, a CI event record completes successfully, it, along with its associated parameter data, will be removed. Now, if you've got records accumulating in CI events, that, that needs to be investigated. But the key item is, there's a couple of key items. What is the type of event? Is it, are they create app requests? Because those are by far the most important. And secondly, how old are these records? If you've got, obviously we need to clean them up, but if you've got records for create app requests that are a year, two years old, even a few months old, the, the relevancy of those, it, it's probably, they're probably not that relevant anymore because the end user more than likely canceled the request, submitted another one, they've kind of moved on. So those, we may not need to worry about reprocessing those. The, the ones that we need to be concerned about are the ones that are in CI events and they're in a status of running because that means those are currently trying to get processed and for some reason they may or may not be getting processed. So that's, that's when we would need, if, you, if you've got them accumulating in a running status, that definitely needs some troubleshooting on it as far as, you know, Java plugin logging, server-side logging. If they're accumulating with error or they're older or they're coming from other parts of uh, the CAI plugin, like maybe a, a, a app in request resolved or work log updates, those, while they, they are important, they're not as nearly important as the create app request events. So they all need to be investigated, but we, we need to focus on the create app request. There are escalations that help process any records that may kind of be left behind. And I've got them listed here. They, they're checking the ones that are unprocessed, 
cleaning up any that are completed and retrying any that may be in an error state that haven't hit the max retries. And we're going to talk about max retries here in a minute. So some of the common issues that we've run into with CAI, uh, a 382 error, uh, multiple retries, unique index, some incorrect data in mappings resulting in the fulfillment records not being created, some incorrect foundation, correct or missing foundation data that results in fulfillment records not being created, performance issues due to a private queue not being configured, and then overall AR server issues affecting the CAI plugin. So the use case number one, the AR error 92 resulting in a 382. Now the 382 error occurs when a fulfillment record is attempted to be created using, and most of the time there's two unique indexes that are violated when this occurs. They're, they're on the instance ID field, and usually the, it's either you know, the incident ID, the work order ID, or the change request ID. Most of the time it's on field 179, which is the instance ID. There's a unique index there. So any attempt, once a record is created using that, a, a certain instance ID value, any attempt to create another record using it will result in a 382 error. So there have been scenarios occur when there's been a timeout and it's been an AR error 92 timeout and the event eventually did process. But during that time, other attempts to, utilize, to use that field 179 value were made via the plugin and that resulted in 382 errors because the, 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 the original record did eventually get created. So there was, a, there was an issue that, that, that occurred where multiple hundreds of incorrect notifications could occur and the, the value that I've mentioned below, the max params retries, that needs to be set to three in the plugin server config.xml. That had been set to 300, and I believe starting in 9103 and above, it was set to three, but if you upgraded from a previous version, the upgrade doesn't touch that value. So just make sure that on all your servers, a plugin server config.xml, the max params retries is set to three. 382 errors occurred due to the timeout. They could occur due to a rollback. I've also seen scenarios where sometimes custom workflow played a role where the event was processed again. It kind of looped back around and tried to process it even though it had already successfully created a, a, a record before. And I've got a link down here to a community's article of the KA that we have created about this situation. It's got a Word document in there with some updates that can be made to one of the out-of-the-box escalations to no longer process, try to reprocess the AR error 92 of records and CI events because that was causing part of the issue. We were trying to reprocess AR error 92s and that was resulting in unique index errors. So this KA is uh, pretty useful. The document has some good information in it, so I would recommend checking that out. Okay, use case number two. So this is a scenario where you're passing values in your SRD, you know, via question, you know, static text, however you're passing them, and the, the data you're passing doesn't match the data that's in your system. So this, is, this can result in various AR errors. I've got some of the core AR errors listed there, but some of the foundation-based errors, the 44699 is the incident assignment. We've got the, the 853 as a work order manager, and the 129 is about you know product or opcats not matching. So to, to correct this scenario, you would need to update your data in the SRD 
and check the data in the PDT and the AOT as well to make sure that your fields that you're passing and your variables all line up and you've exposed the fields that you really need exposed in the AOT and that they match everything that you're passing as well. And the events that failed due to these errors, they can be reprocessed by updating the missing or incorrect values and, and starting them again. And we're gonna talk here in a couple minutes about how to reprocess a failed record. So the next use case is similar to the first one. The, some of the errors you would get are the same types of errors as in the first one, but the, the reason for it is different. In this scenario, you're passing what you really want to pass as far as the, the values you're passing for, you know, product cat, op cat, whatever values you're passing are correct, but you don't have the data on your system that matches what you're passing. Now, I've seen this before when an SRD is imported from one system to another, the foundation data may not match like between a dev and a QA system. So you could have missing records in CFG assignment or application templates or the product and opcats aren't consistent. So in this scenario, you just need to update that foundation data so that it matches what you're passing. Like I said, normally this happens when an SRD is sent from one system to another via export or D2P. So these records can be reprocessed by correcting the foundation data, either importing the missing records or updating any records that are out of sync with, with what's being passed in the SRD. Okay, the fourth scenario is a performance related one where the CI plugin is not configured in a private queue. And I've got documentation linked down there on how to configure it. And it's gonna be on the CI plugin registry form. And if you don't have a private queue in place, the CAI plugin is gonna share the fast queue with all the other AR server activity. So it's not gonna have any priority. So it could, it, depending on what's going on in the server, the fast queue activity could keep CAI from processing events. They may stay in running longer. They may possibly time out depending on what's going on. So that kind of goes back to what I had mentioned earlier about the running events. If you've got events that are in a running status, check to make sure you have a private queue configured. If you don't, set one up. It's definitely gonna improve the performance and one can be configured, like I said, as a, as a doc link below on the CI plugin registry form. The fifth use case we've got is just an overall AR server performance issue is affecting the CI plugin. Since, you know, the, the plugin is running part, as part of the Java plugin, if the AR server is having issues, it's going to affect the CI plugin as well. So you could have, you know, resource, database, network issues, configuration issues, and the CI plugin could be affected by these. So I've got a couple of, I got three errors up here. It, the, these are type, these are the types of errors you would probably see. There could be others as well, but it's just kind of a, a general overall signal that something is not right. You're seeing the CI plugin not working properly, but if you check the AR error log, you're also seeing some other errors about timeouts. And, and they're not specific to CAI or SRM. I mean, like these examples here, we've got SLM timeout, we've got an assignment engine timeout, and some other, and, and the dispatch error as well. So, I mean, the errors that you're gonna see will span across on any application. So at you know at this point, like I said, you would want to check resources, network, config, were there any recent AR server, OS level patches, any, any other kind of changes done in the environment 
that could be playing a role because I said if the AR server itself is experiencing a problem, the CI plugin is definitely going to be affected as well. Okay, so I talked earlier about reprocessing failed records. So there's a couple of options that are available. And that can be done via the SRM request record itself or via the CI events record. So it just I've got a note down there, and, and that's something I had mentioned earlier. If the record failed due to foundation data or some other data on the box, it, it wasn't what was being passed in the record. It's that something is missing on the box or incorrect as far as foundation data goes. Before you reprocess that record, you're going to need to correct that issue. Because if that issue isn't corrected, the reprocessing isn't going to work. So we need to make sure that whatever was the cause of this, of this issue, the CAI error, has been corrected prior to reprocessing any events. So we're going to go into a little more detail on how to do each one of these. Okay, so via the SRM request record itself, on the processes and questions tab, the event status field will have a value of error. So if you wanted to just see how many you had, this would be one way to see how many requests were in this status. And you can check by doing a search against error for that field. Now keep in mind, this is going to list all of them, like I said before. You may have some that two and three years old. And the other thing this is going to do as well is it's going to present an error from any step in the process. The, the process tree on the left, as you can see in the example I've got up here, it just had a single item in it. So we know where the failure is there. It's pretty obvious. But if you have a multi-step item where you have multiple AOIs in the flow, maybe even multiple PDTs, you may need to scroll down through that list on the left to locate the one that failed. Because you may have a few that worked in your flow. They maybe had a couple work orders and an incident that was successful, but then a change request failed. So you would have to scroll down through that list to find the specific one that failed. So once you get the one that failed, we see here, you know, this error that I've got, it's, it's fairly descriptive. It tells me that a field cannot be blank. So at that point, you can click on the View Events button. And when you click on View Events, you get this dialog. So now in this, in, in this dialog, you have the option to highlight fields in the event parameters. So that table on the left corner is essentially the data from the CEI event params form for this specific event. So you can highlight records in that table and update the param value as needed. Click the commit button. And if you have one to update, you just update one. If you have multiple, you update any that need to be updated. Click the commit button after each one you update. Once you've updated them all, you can click retry. And then at that point, the event is going to it's going to try to retry the event. And you can just go back in there again, close that dialog, enter it again, and see if the event was successful. If it was successful, there won't be anything here. It'll clear itself out. If you still have an issue, this will still show as an error, and uh, you can update whatever else needs to be updated on it at that point in time. The other method is to reprocess these records directly from the CI events form itself. I've got some steps listed here, and the, they're, they're keying off of knowing the service request ID and then getting the event GUID value. Because the event GUID is what ties the CI events record to the parameters. They're all going to share the same event GUID. You know, CI events record, I don't want to call it the parent, but it's kind of the container record, I guess. And there's going to be parameter records linked to it. 
And on the fulfillment creation, there's going to be, you know, up to, I mean, there, there could be a, a lot of records tied to it, you know, 30, 40, however many. On some of the other CI events, some of them may not really have much in parameters, and we may not need to worry about doing anything in the parameter data with that, some of the other CI event types, like the work log, status syncs. We wouldn't need to worry much about those, the CI event parameters. Those are going to come into play mainly on the fulfillment creation. So once you've located the CI event parameter data for that specific event, you can just go in and modify the param value field for the records that need to be updated. And you would just save the records. At that point, you return to, you, you go to the CI events form, using the event GUID, locate the failed record. You would set the retry counter on that record to zero because if it's in an error status, that retry counter is going to be three because out of the box, three is the, the number of retries it's going to do. And once it's, once it's failed three times, it's going to set itself to an error. So it's not tried again. So set the retry counter to zero, set the return code to start and save it. If that was successful, when you search again using the event GUID, you're not going to see that record any longer in the form. It's going to be cleared out. Here's a, a little excerpt of a parameter data record and the events record. And we see the event GUID shared between them. And here's some of the other fields I mentioned as well. The param value in the event parameter record, the return code and the retry counter. Also, we see this return message. That's, a, that's the same return message we saw when we went into this SRM request record. So, you know, keep track of the, the, the return message values. They're, a lot of the time they're fairly descriptive and they can be helpful in letting you know what the issue is. Okay, so if, if you're not able to, to determine the cause of your, of your issue, issue and you need to open a support case, here's some items that can be very helpful to kind of giving us a head start as far as troubleshooting goes. So with approvals, you got server side, filter SQL API, and the service request ID value. When you submit the service request that's having the issue, make a note of that value so that we can check for that in the log. So that's going to be a key item for us to make sure that we can kind of follow the flow of what happened. I mean, that may be something you want to do before you send the logs in. After you capture it, just check to make sure that you see that request ID, you probably see the ticket num generator record for that ID in the logs. That, lets, that would let you know that probably what we would need in support is in that log. If you're dealing with an approval chain, it would be good to send the approval chain a screenshot of it fully expanded so that we could just see how it's set up, what set fields are in place, and how the processes flow and also a screenshot of the qualification. That can be helpful in determining, like in one of the scenarios, they said maybe an approval change running and it shouldn't, maybe none of them are running. And then debug approval server logging. That's gonna help us determine what might be happening if there's no, if the approval's getting uh, rejected, if there's no approvers found, the debug approval server logging will help there. Now, for CAI, it, similar type, the first two items match basically with what I had for approvals, the server-side logging and the service request ID. The other items here are debug logging for the plugin. That can be turned on via the CAI plugin registry form that I mentioned earlier. There's a debug field there. You can set that to all. If, if we're having processing issues, if, there, if, if, if items just aren't 
going into an error, but they're kind of hung and running, or we've got some other processing issues that are occurring, the config files would be helpful. They are config and plugin server config, and if you're in a server group, we need those from each server in the group. And the last one, this can be important if because we don't want records to accumulate in CI events or parameters. They should both get cleaned out. If you've got them accumulated in there and, and you're concerned about it, I mean, if, if you've got a, you know, I don't know, if you've got a couple, a hundred or so, they're sitting in an error, some of them are old, we could probably, I don't think you're going to be having any impact there. But if we're into the thousands of records in there, we need to investigate those because more than likely there could be an issue occurring. There may have been an issue in the past that's been corrected, and those records need to be cleaned up. And, you know, they can be cleaned up via, depending on how many are there, you know, a lot of times a database uh, deletion from the from the form is probably the most efficient way to do it. You could, if you wanted to, you could uh, take one of the out-of-the-box escalations, mod, uh, save it as something else and modify it to clean them up that way. But we you export those records, send them into support so we can take a look at them to see what's there. Because there may be an underlying problem with an SRD or with data that we can help you address, or it just may be a matter of these records at this point in time, you know, like I said, months, years have passed, they're not really relevant anymore, and they're just kind of taking up space, and we can just, we'll just let you know to remove those. But that's always good when you're having a CI event issue to send that data in. Okay, so here are some references that, uh, that are fairly, fairly useful for the, some of the information we covered today. There's an approval chain blog post. It's about how to use, utilize the Z1D approver field and an auto approval chain. It's got some good screenshots, a good walkthrough there of how to set that up. And if you're new to approval chains and you're just getting started on them, I think that's a very good post. We've got the BMC support site documentation for logs for SRM. I covered a couple of scenarios here for approvals in CAI. That link has got the references for all kinds of different other issues scenario-wise. And then there's a previous webinar that was done on SRM troubleshooting, and it takes it, it, it goes in a little deeper detail than what we covered here from some of the processes. That's a very useful uh, webinar as well. So with this, Greg, I'll hand it back over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for the presentation on this. And at this time, it will be a Q&A, live Q&A time. And Rochelle, would you please provide uh, instructions to our callers for asking questions, signaling us for questions? Thank you. The question and answer session will be conducted electronically. If you would like to ask a question, please press star followed by the digit one. If you are using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach your equipment. A voice prompt on your phone will indicate when your line has been opened. Once again, star one to ask a question and we'll pause for a moment. And we'll take our first caller. Please go ahead. Yeah, I have a question about if there is a way to prove that um, a request was signed is there, um, uh, is there a way to push the approver's signature to the ticket that's created afterwards? Are you talking about a fulfillment ticket? Yes, a fulfillment ticket. So after all the approval stages are finished, uh, sometimes our support teams want to know, one proof that it was actually approved. Um, and that's fine with the change record, but for a incident or a work order, besides the ticket showing up, how do they know uh, for sure that somebody approved it? Yeah, other, I mean, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that unless it's on the ticket. You could you could view the details of the service request. I mean, I don't know if the, if, if if somebody has access to the work order and they click the view request button, they should be able to go to the look at the request details. I, I don't know if they have access to the service request because if they do, they should be able to see the details and the additional details in the service request. Yeah, they can see that. Um, I was just wondering if it was something. 
um, that can show up on the ticket, but I'll just have them do that instead. Thank you. And we'll go to our next caller. Please go ahead. Hi, I got a question. We're using a Remedy ROD solution, and we're noticing on our CIA event parameters form, we got like over a million records. Is that normal, or should that be investigated? No, that's, yeah, that's not normal. We need to look into that. I mean, how, do you know how many records you have in CI events? Uh, none on CI events. I just notice this now. Because oh, really? The There's none in yeah. CI events? Okay, yeah. It, so what it sounds like to me is somebody may have cleaned up the CI events data, but they didn't clean up the parameters. So, I mean, yeah, I would, I would have somebody take a look at that. I, I think you should have our team take a look at that because uh, if, if you have no CI event records, the parameter records themselves are, you know, there's not much that could be done with them. So those, those probably need to be cleaned up as well. So I'd recommend getting a case open for our, our, our ROD team and have they can take a look at that with you. Okay. And uh, just a, another quick question on that. Uh, would this impact the plugin from crashing? Because we were having plugin issues recently. I don't know that it could. I mean, I mean, we don't want. I don't think. I don't. I don't know that. I don't think that it would because the CI events record is really is really what's being processed by the plugin. The parameters are only picked up when the record is processed. So if you don't have anything in CI events, I don't think the plugin would really be doing anything at that point. Okay. All right. Thanks. Caller, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. I'm getting a. Um, so we don't have any approval requests, but we do have the standard request, and we're getting a 990. One one error, which looks to be a Z1B field name error, but I don't have any param value when I go into the event history. So I'm not really sure where the breakdown is, and it's happening on multiple forms. Suggestions? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I honestly, I mean, is this something? I, I think we may, I think you may need to get a case open for that. But is it something that you can reproduce? No. Or are you not sure how it's being reproduced? I don't know. It's coming in sporadic, and and I I'm on different forms, so I don't know how it's uh, how it's generated. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I I know that 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 error message sounds familiar, but I don't know without like a server side log to see exactly what's what's uh, triggering it that we'd be able to figure it out. So. Uh, I mean, even if it's sporadic, maybe you could try to catch some logs, get a case open with us, and we can look into it further for you. And I was also wondering, the link that you sent at the end, uh, is there a way that we can get those? Because I saw the link. But I yeah, I put them also in the chat uh, window. So they're available in the chat window, and these also will be available once the webinar is published. But you're able to go to the chat window now to uh, pull those links. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. And we'll move on to our next caller. Please go ahead. Yeah, okay. So we are facing an issue with approvals and change management on attaching ad hoc approvals as uh, group approvals. Under the approval column, the support group uh, name ID comes, but not the IDs of the members of the support group. So what happens is we get the SGP, uh, you know, multiple zeros and some number that is attached, but no approvals are triggered to the members of the support group. And there are yeah, I don't know. with the uh, change approval rights in the support group. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not 100% sure on change management, how that works. You may need to get a ticket open with our ITSM team for that, but I know on the SRM side mm -hmm. that when you run into that scenario, there, and you already pretty much answered, I, I've seen that before when there are no approvers with that role. And it just lists the support group. But if you're saying for your change issue there are approvers with that role, then I'd say get a get a ticket open with our ITSM team, and they can help you with that. Uh, yeah. Okay. And one more, uh, you know, an additional question related to SRM. If that is fine with you. Sure. Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, we currently are on nine point one point oh two. Okay, and this is my second project with this version of Remedy. But what I have observed is, in both of these projects, we had an issue wherein, uh, you know, the service request uh, used to be, uh, you know, st they still get stuck in submitted mo uh, uh, status. And then we had, uh, you know, a couple of times we had to restart the AR uh, services, and then they get automatically processed, then they move ahead, you know. 
so has that been resolved in the upcoming year or uh, uh, the upcoming versions or uh, the, uh, any hot tips or anything for that as you know you know shared with us i mean yeah i'm i'm not aware of any specific scenarios in that version i mean i've not mm -hmm. heard of this reported much i mean right now we're up to 1808 I've, or, or even 1805, yeah. I've not heard of anybody reporting this. So, I mean, like I said, I, I, I'm not aware of anything in your version, and I've not really heard anything reported in the newer versions either. Oh, okay. We've had a couple more queue up. Caller, please go ahead. Hey, so I had a question about finding fields that show up uh, in the events as having too many characters, and I'm, I'm just trying to find out if there's an easier way to go and find those which field it is that's broken or that which field is trying to push too many characters in? Uh, is there an easier way than, than just going through and throwing a bunch of forms through and, and seeing when they stop crashing? So so what, the, the, the fulfillment tickets aren't being created because some of the fields, there's too many characters tr attempting to be passed to it? Is that what's happening? That's right. And typically it ends up being that uh, somebody chose like uh, SR field number five or something along those lines. and. I think the max is like 30 characters, and once once the um, the user inputs more than that many characters, it it will fail. But it always gives a kind of a vague message as to it basically says there's too many characters, but it doesn't identify the specific field that uh, that had too many. Is there a is there an easier way to to find that uh, field once it comes up in in the events? Yeah, I don't I don't know if you're going to have if there's going to be an easier method if the field's not specified in the event. I mean, that, this isn't going to really do you a whole lot of good. The only way would be get a log when it's submitted, you know, just or, or you could just try to reprocess that event. You could try to reprocess that event with logging turned on and see and you know see what error is, because then the the server side logging would definitely give you a clue of, as to what field it is. Okay. Because I, I right, know I know a lot of the SR type fields have you know some of them have limits, some of them are unlimited, but yeah, I think that's going to be your best shot. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I'll go to our next caller. Please go ahead. Um, I just I, I just uh, asked it in the chat also. Uh, we're we're on demand, and I, I just checked that CAI events uh, form. We've got 4,072 records dating back almost to a year ago. Can that potentially cause performance issues? Yeah, I mean, if, if they're if they're errored, if they're in an error status, they the, the the they shouldn't be in the queue. But I mean, they're still gonna. I I think they're still gonna get looked at, but they're not gonna be processed. I mean, yeah, if you got four thousand in there, we you know I I'd recommend getting a case open with our team and and see if we can get some of those cleaned up because you know stuff that's a year old, you don't you don't need that. You know that's like I said, that stuff is is not going to be of any relevance anymore. And some of the newer stuff, if you guys are getting errors on newer stuff, we need to troubleshoot it and figure out why you're getting them so that you're not getting them because, because you know, you shouldn't have that many in there for sure. Yeah, well, and I'm, notice, I'm noticing a lot, of, a lot of them that they looked at that are recent are also all pending. Uh, does that mean that they're, just, they're, they're pending uh, the server to process them or pending approval action? So the CI, the, 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 return, the return code is pending? Uh, yeah, the return message just says pending. What what's the return code value? Uh, it would be right message above it. Code is, yeah, message code is zero. And mm -hmm. above that, return okay. code is okay. Okay, so yeah, those those should be gone. If 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 it's okay, those should have gotten cleaned up. So I I mean that that one escalation that cleans up un uh, completed events. That should be cleaning those up because if, if I, I don't know how many you've got in that if, if that return code of okay, but those should be gone. So um, I would I, I, I'm not going to say you can I, I'm not going to say you're safe to remove those. It sounds to me like you are, but I'd recommend having our team take a look at those just to double check because it sounds to me the status those are in that those should not be still in there. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we'll go to our next caller. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I was just having a look in our uh, CAI events, uh, the CI events uh, form as well. And uh, on a couple of entries, when I click, what I see is uh, there's a prompt that says uh, entry, does, you know, entry does not exist in database. 
and you know yeah, when well, I click, uh, click ok on that prompt it, yeah it comes you know it just displays that entry again okay so 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 wait you you you're looking in ci events and are you yeah, searching correct. for a specific one and you're getting a, a an entry does not exist or or is that an error you're seeing in the ci event record itself no, no, no. So what I did was I went to advanced search and I, uh, you know, I invite a generic search one is equal to one. And I found that we do have around 6,000 records here. But I was just randomly scrolling through them just to check out if, you know, most of them have uh, what type of errors we have commonly seen. But mm -hmm. uh, a few of them, when I click on them, they prompt up saying that uh, entry does not exist in database. Well, they may, they may have been, they may have gotten processed. But when you when you did your initial search, they were there, but they may have gotten processed since then. I don't know. I mean, I, I have seen that happen before. I don't. I don't know how many. I don't know what the status of, of those were when when you did your initial search. But you know, it, mm -hmm. it's possible that it it, it it cleared itself out. And like, like I mentioned, once the record is processed successfully, it will get cleaned up. So that may have been what happened. But if you got six thousand in there. That's still that's a fairly high number. You may want to have us look into that for you to try to help you determine which ones of those can be cleaned up and which ones we need to reprocess. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, and one more addition. See, there was a slide wherein we were talking about CI issues, uh, CI issues, use case number five, the troubleshooting yes. aspect. When so we see the first two errors, the SLMCS timeout during data retrieval due to busy server, and we also see the dispatch operation cancel due to error. So we see these two errors constantly, and uh, you know it, how it is with teams. You know we have we we have uh, you know looked into communities and everywhere, and we now by now we know that we have not made any changes to AR server, or there have been no uh, you know patches applied. On the as far as the worst level is concerned, but uh, you know we are still having issue figuring out you know what at what level this issue is occurring. So do uh, do you have any advice on how we can uh, narrow it down? Well, I mean I I don't know. I mean the, the, those two errors in and of themselves don't. I mean they don't necessarily mean there's a problem with CI. Now if you're seeing a problem with CI as well and you have those errors, then there might be an overall AR server issue. But I mean, I think that's the key thing. Is your CAI plugin, does it appear to be processing normally? Are you getting fulfillment requests created timely and are other updates happening properly? I think that's the main question. Yeah, if that's generally, happening. Generally, yeah. Okay. So then I don't I, I don't know that we can say there's a general AR server issue that could be affecting CAI. Now those two errors, they may just may just, you know, be occurring on their own, you may need to investigate those separately. Unless you're seeing other AR server issues, other issues, then you, you probably need to get a case open with our AR server team so they can investigate that thing as a whole because there could be something oh, okay. else going on. Oh, yeah. Got it. Thank you. And there are no questions at this time. Okay, thank you, Rochelle. Uh, at this time, we will wrap up this month's Connect with Remedy webinar and wanted to thank uh, Jeff Hudson, our presenter, as well as all of our attendees for joining us this month. Uh, we are available 24-7 uh, via our YouTube channel. You can check it out and subscribe, as well as the knowledge base that's available through the support portal. And you can reach technical support via web, phone, email, as well as, as, well as our social channel, channels. At this, at this time, time we'll, we'll wrap up the webinar for this month. Thank you for joining.